unblinded movement. This song, this song I actually know. So this is a, a beautiful, fun fact on a Why Wednesday. I jump into these huddles. I love this music. I enjoy it most of the time. No idea who they are. And if you know who they are, drop it in the chat. Let's have some fun as we step into Why Wednesday. So first off, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Truly appreciate it. Whether it's your first huddle, your hundredth huddle, it's a pleasure to be co-creating this time, starting off our day in the best way with the daily dose of integrity-based human influence. And if you're wondering what we do here or if we're reinforcing, we create fun, magical, and simple micro distinctions in frictionlessness that free exponential abundance. We do it every single day, Monday through Friday, from 8.30 to 9 o'clock with some really fine folk just like yourselves. And thank you for the chatter in the chat as we'll have some optics on that later on on the call. So as we step into Why Wednesday, every single day has a tone, has an energy. We have four energies in our formula, and each day has a tone. And it can mean different things, different strokes for different folks. And today's Why Wednesday. So as we anchor, as we anchor on like, why? Out of curiosity and love, why are we here? Why are we here? Some people, it's 5.30 in the morning. Some people, it's like, 8.30 at night, and we're here, and we're here together, and we're growing, we're accelerating, we're stepping into beautiful phases of acceleration, and we're doing it together. So on this Why Wednesday, let's anchor in the chat. Please drop it in there, whether it's one word or a sentence. What's your why? Is it strength? Is it love? Is it legacy? Is it leadership? Is it empathy? What is it? Why are we here? Why are we here? I'm here for community. I'm so grateful for every single one of you. The fact that we're here together co-creating, I am humbled and honored to be in the position to be able to co-create with just such superheroes, truly. I don't say superheroes like, you know, weird. I say superheroes like, wow, there's a lot of humans in the world. And a lot of humans on this call, most, are truly stepping into their heart-centered leadership their heart-centered influence, and they're doing amazing, amazing things. So as I just step into the chat, because I want to bring your voice. This is for you. It's not about us. This is about you. Every single action, movement, minute is about you. So as we bring in your voice, we have Jack with confidence. We have Richard Martin community. Feel that, brother. We got Patricia with connection. Orlando de los Santos. My why is empowerment. Mm. Martha, truth, Erica, love. We have Mary with connection. Rich Levine is sitting there with no electric and he's here for listening. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Rich. We have Rosa with legacy. And thank you, Mr. Jason Sipple. Uh, you're a superhero as well. And I'm glad you're stepping in powerfully. Bob Perry with faith. Ridu with legacy. We have David with light and love. So many, so many. So thank you all of you for sharing, for connecting, for bringing in your Why Wednesday as we step into you know, different conversations of acceleration. And when we say acceleration, it is zone action. And as we begin our conversation here today, like zone action, like what is that and where is it and the formula and I thought there was four energies. Self-mastery, the like epitome of self-mastery is in the choice and execution on zone action. That is like the byproduct of efficient self-mastery. Many other things, many, many other things. To you know, create a micro container, self-mastery, all 10 or 12 data points in its highest 9.9. Um, we spoke about it in few previous huddles about the different circles where they fit. We're not gonna step into that now. The, the evenness, the even growth of the 10, 12 data points of self-mastery equals zone action. Zone action being defined as the most efficient use of time for your money, time, and magic, period. And when we step into conversation of zone action, because our formula has three parts, self-mastery, influence mastery, process mastery, and I'm so grateful for all the coaching calls I've been able to have with all of you to go through that experience of knowing different parts of the formula and that's available for you if you've never had that experience please call our team we'd love to have 
you know, a share of our strategy session where we explain the formula, create breakthroughs. We don't guarantee them. We're very certain they will occur based on numbers, stats, and data. So if that's something that's of interest to you, please let our team know. Team, I'm blinded in the chat. If you can please throw a couple numbers in there. So that I would love for our, everyone here to be able to connect to experience that strategy session. Let's keep dropping in self-mastery, influence mastery, and process mastery. Zone action is the byproduct of self-mastery. And in the world, you know, we're blessed to be able to coach amazing folks. Sean is as well. And Mr. Callagy, hello, how are you and how are you doing? As I am doing awesome. This. Appreciate that. Uh, just had a little bit of technical difficulty, guys. We're still in the uh, vestiges of uh, the storm. But Fernando, how are you and what's cooking? Um, what's cooking is actually um, a purple shake with kale, beets, and blueberries in it. So that's what's physically cooking. And what's oh, that cooking sounds here, disgusting. Horrible. <laughs> brother, it has a freaking one tablespoon. I used to put way more of peanut butter, and it tastes incredible. So well, that's, that's awesome. a conversation for a different day. But by I'm the way, if anyone doesn't know, Sean is actually allergic to vegetables. I think that's a rumor, but he definitely doesn't eat them. Yes. Well, uh, that is a longer story for a different day. That is uh, partially true. Um, but yes, we are at Why Wednesday. And why eat vegetables when you can eat sugar and have fun? I'm just kidding. So nobody gets nervous and crazy. Um, but yes, my daughter Emma's birthday was yesterday. And uh, what was certainly present was uh, cinnamon French toast and every topping imaginable from vanilla icing to vanilla um, uh, sauce to hot fudge two sprinkles, two uh, peanut butter, two raspberry. So yes, Fernando, it was quite an interesting uh, breakfast. Nice. Yes. So hey, everybody, it's Why Wednesday. Uh, what's happening? And um, whew, what is present for me um, is the love of people and connection. And thank you, all of you, for being here. Um, hopefully, for those of you that, yeah, because well, we haven't checked in on this in a little bit. Um, for, the, for those of you that are experiencing stress and challenge and worry and fear, uh, those things are present. Like there's realities, you know, there's like some virus going around. There's people who believe different things about it, but unquestionably people are getting sick. Um, there's people that are dying. Um, there's complexity about what it means for our economy. There's uh, immense amounts of different racial and other tensions that are flowing and the overcoming of things and how do we impact things that were historically away and you know do we shift alignment on how we reorient to history all of these dynamics and arguments are present and real and my heart and my empathy goes out to people um, you know related to those realities what i want to speak into about those and other in a storm like power was out my friends like i have no power i have no internet you know in northern all throughout new jersey there's there's stuff i don't know what happened to the beach houses we're gonna find out 110 mile an hour winds uh, everybody and fernando hit long beach island 110 miles per hour i never heard 100 plus mile an hour winds i don't remember what sandy maxed out at sustainably um and, or maxed out a period but um it, it could have been more but I don't ever remember hearing 110 mile an hour winds hitting LBI. It was like, oh my God. So um, yeah, lots happening, lots occurring. You know, maybe the roof deck is ripped off with chairs flying all over the place. Like, um, not sure, we'll find out soon. So, but what I'm also, pre all of that, like, yes, dynamics, heaviness, like somebody had a fight with their significant other this morning. If that was you, my heart goes out. Somebody's dealing with a struggle for their child you know, maybe there's drug issues, maybe there's a pregnancy, um, you know, maybe you found out that they're gambling and, you know, you're concerned. Maybe there's, you know, other, other things going on with alcohol. Um, you know, maybe they're in a relationship, you know, somebody you love and care about, a sibling, right? A child, a parent in, in a relationship with somebody that you're like, oh my God, this is like not what should be, right? And maybe somebody falsely accused you of something. Maybe somebody was, um, you know, is gossiping about you and reframing some dynamic and making a story up around it that has elements of truth, but is in reality not at all your truth. And it hurts and you're frustrated and you're tired. 
maybe somebody promised they would do a bunch of stuff and they haven't done it. And it's really, really uh, in your space and on you. And maybe you're just like, you know, I feel like quitting. I just feel like quitting. Like, dude, nothing's ever going to work. I just don't even want to believe anymore. And it would be so much easier to just like, just give in and just like watch TV and check out what's on Netflix. And those, that French toast and that frosting and icing you're talking about, dude, I, let me just eat that all day, every day and just not care. And like anesthetize myself to like the pains and frustrations of what I just can't break through. Or things are pretty good. I just gonna like stay here. It just feels super comfortable. And if any of those are your feelings, I honor them. I validate them and we at Unblinded connect to them and empathize completely. Because every single one of those things at some level, somebody here has experienced and for you, for me even, lots of them. You know, I've had friends that I've lost over drug problems. I've had alcohol in my life. You know, um, my stepdaughter got pregnant when she was 17. Um, you know, people like scary, crazy people came into people's lives in my world. Um, you know, I've had people who I trusted completely who flat out stole money from me. I mean, stole money. Like, you know, I had somebody in a business once that refurbished, um, claimed to be refurbishing one of our office bathrooms and spending $40,000 and they spent it on their house, straight up stole the money. And then like later lied about it and justified it in some bizarre and insane way saying they told me they were borrowing money, like, like blatant lie. Right. Um, I've had, I've had people, um, yeah, I would say do just about every one of those things. And I've done some things that like, I'm sure upset people. I'm not sure I'm positive, upset people. They had their own stories and reality, pissed them off to no end. Like that they were like, wait, I thought you were going to do this. And you didn't, all of those things are present. It's a part of the human condition, all of it. So it's like, breathe. And for some, you're like, hey, let's just get like fired up and let's get ready for the day. Like we're here to connect for everybody. And we go fast and we've been sharing a lot of things about business and distinctions and, you know, um, accelerations. And, but let's connect with our hearts and our nervous systems on this Why Wednesday. And let's give ourselves a little bit of empathy and love for, for a minute, for a hot minute. And then remember like, but like, before we remember anything, like, let's like truly collectively step into a place of mutual empathy. Like my heart is open to you, Fernando, and you, everybody here for any pain, any, any pain, anger, resentment, abandonment, frustration, fear that is present in any space in your life, your money, your time, your magic, anywhere in those spaces. And for each and every one of you, my heart, my thoughts, my prayers are with you in your nervous system, in your head, in your thinking, your brain, your nervous system about those pains and those experiences that are occurring for you. Like connected, present, it feels so real. And they might go, yeah, like, dude, I said somebody I love pass away. It is real. And yeah, it is. Right? It is. And empathy and love and connecting with that dynamic is fully present. Fernando, what is present for you? What is present for me is that feeling. Um, that feeling, which I will describe from a quote from Joseph Campbell. He says, I don't believe people are looking for the meaning of life as much as they're looking for the experience of being alive. And damn, does it feel so good, so good to be alive, to be walking and stepping in your zone action, to be loving unconditionally with boundaries, to be truly merging, making a difference in the world. That feels freaking awesome and drinking some like weird protein shakes and like renting boats and having fun and like almost drowning in LBI. So all those things <laughs> equal being alive. 
and even you know with la final we talk about fear a lot we talk about fear a lot i was freaking scared when there was like thunder waves and he sean's like yeah let's just jump into the water even though i've never been in that water before like there was fear there and fear could mean many things but when i look back at that memory it's such an awesome memory and even the fear makes me giggle i like that was ridiculous that was ridiculous well i i agree brother and and the opportunity the cho the reality is that it's really all just the story you know it's all just the story whether that was scary and fun or meaningful or not it's all the stories that our conditioning makes up and our intention makes up like above me and behind me those skis you could see michael jimmy skis rando or no we can see jimmy skis yes you can or cannot we can okay so many of you know my uncle was killed tragically in a truck accident in 1998 um on may 22nd the friday of memorial day weekend going down to long beach island and he was going down to see my grandmother his mother right my mom was supposed to be in the car my sister was supposed to be in the car my cousin scott was 11 years old was in the car his sister jamie uh, who's now a doctor at university of pennsylvania she's delivered thousands of babies um, she was in the car as well. Their mother, my Aunt Carol, was in the car. She broke her neck at C2 in the accident. My uncle was instantly killed when they were rear-ended by a tractor trailer. To date, and there's not a close second, it was the most traumatic event of my life. The shock, the, my mom called up screaming, crying in the moment. And um, the mom of my children, Pengine, answered the phone. My buddy Tom Filatico and his wife were in the house having pizza. And I was gonna be going down to shore the next morning. And um, Piggy just like handed me the phone and was like, your mom is screaming. I heard my mom screaming and I can't understand her. And I knew somebody was dead and I didn't wanna grab the phone. I was like frozen into abject fear and dread and horror. My mom got on the phone and she's like, she says, screams, Uncle Jimmy is dead and Carol is dying. Jamie is in surgery and nobody knows about Scott. And tears just start pouring down my face. I like collapse to the floor and I, I can't even process all the pain. My grandparents, both are still alive. My, Grandmother Nani and my grandfather Pop. Our family was incredibly close. He was my godfather. I think my mom lost her brother. You know, my grandparents lost their son. I mean, it was inconceivable. And he was the greatest example of success in my life. He was a retina surgeon. His story is unbelievable in process, influence, and self mastery for what he accomplished being the son of my grandparents that had you know no economics my grandfather was blind he went into eyes back later in life because of my grandfather's eye condition with the mission of eventually solving my condition my grandfather's condition to cure blindness right by the way his name was james victor bastek b-a-s-t-e-k they donated a million dollars to saint peter's college he has a building named after him um the bastek building and he was committed to in the back half, he's 52 years old, two years old than I am right now. In the back half of his life, he was committed to bringing changes in medicine to, to Africa and the third world. Like, and, and that's who he was and what he was, an unbelievable father. And so all of this in a second, gone, you know? And, and I'm laying in bed that night with my 11-year-old cousin, Scott, whose father is gone, you know, no longer here, and just holding him. And Scott's uh, vertebrae are broken, he's a broken back, you know, and, you know, it, they were, they were, thank God, not this place fracture, but a broken back. And I'm laying in this hospital bed, going back and forth to visit his sister and mom in ICU, right? My grandparents on the way up, I can't even imagine what's gonna happen because they were in Long Beach Island. They saw this on television is how they found out about it. I just, 
on and on and on. And we all have choices about all of these meanings, you know? And, and the choice could be like, there is no God. Why would such a horrible thing happen to such a good human being? And he was a good human being. I've never seen more people at a funeral in my entire life. It took two hours to get into his wake. People lined up down the blocks, completely crazy. And so here though, um, is in addition to the loss, the pain, I miss him. I miss him. I miss skiing with him. I miss him teaching me. I miss him sharing with me. I miss laughing with him. I miss being with him and Scott. I think about my, my son, Tyler. My daughter's courting him and never met him. I think about what we'd be doing on a weekend in Long Beach Island. Um, you know, my, my cousin Jamie has kids, you know, with, with her kids and my kids and everybody together and, you know, what it all would look like and how different everything would be and all that we've lost. And those are all truths, right? And they're a story. They're a story. Like, it, I don't know what happened, right? And there, there's, but there's definitely beautiful moments lost. At the same time, my choice and our choice in every situation is what was gained. And as difficult, and, and, and for some, it's like sacrilegious. How could you even say that? Right? How could you even say that? And my answer is because I knew my uncle. And, and in addition to missing him, which he would appreciate, and having his legacy to live on, which I have worked hard at and posted many articles and videos and things over time about him, part of what he wanted his legacy to be is what's the positive that came out of all this? And I could speak volumes about other people, but I'll speak for me. It reminded me about urgency. Because I'm sure if my uncle had some things to do over, he would have, in his beautiful 99.999 life, on his, on his dreams, the impossible he created, I'm sure there's things he would have advanced, causes and outcomes sooner. I'm sure he would have, right? Um, I also learned from mistakes he made in his life because I've analyzed things. And I've avoided some of those mistakes, thankfully, because of having a much greater incentive to analyze some of his decisions. Maybe not mistakes, it's suboptimal. Um, dynamics about things and family conflicts and people not talking to each other and some things like that that have caused me to evaluate my own self-mastery and those dynamics a little bit differently. Um, I've my already high level of cherishing moments and magic has only exponentially magnified because I think of him multiple times per week at the least, and it reinforces why I jump in the ocean every time, no matter how cold it is. Why I go up on the roof of my beach house when I can't even see the ocean or the bay anymore, the view I cherish, that not because my eye condition I can't see anymore, I still do it and close my eyes and remember what it looked like and feel the feelings of what it's like to be on that roof. I may not have been doing that if I didn't lose my uncle and I may not be here doing this if my uncle was still here. I don't know. I may not have certain words and phrases and things that have impacted the lives of others and therefore him impacting. I may not have caught, taught 30 people plus to ski. I probably wouldn't have taken my entire law firm to Grand Cayman. In all of these things, in part, I share the memory of my grandparents and him and others that I love and cherish. And whatever that pain is that you're experiencing, and I have many, many more, you know, the alcohol dynamics of my father, 
what occurred and transpired during my second marriage, which was some of the most painful for me, like unbelievable, like greatest nightmares other than death that I would have ever thought about. And all of the ways that those have through incredible hard work, being coached, being trained, coaching myself, training myself, encountering information, have turned those into things that have strengthened my love for people, my resolve for building this mission, my resolve for being happy and enjoying a 14 hour day and getting up and doing it again the next morning when the last hour was dealing with unexpected dynamics that were not what I would have hoped for, were not replenishing for me last night, but had me showing up this morning ready to deliver and to remember the heaviness on the hearts of some, the self-mastery challenges that you might be experiencing, to remember that some mornings when I'm like, yes, and it's easy, and do this, man, you might be crying, overwhelmed, in despair, and remembering to re-establish right here, collectively rapport on the huddle, to be with the hearts of the people that are struggling, some more or lots more than most or others. And that's also what this is. Because on our Why Wednesday, part of the magic is rooted in the love for people and our collective connection here. And while we have so much to do and accomplish and to give the world, let's remember to have empathy for people who are struggling, who are lost, whose hearts are heavy, which includes every single one of us at some point during our day, our week, and our month. Because I don't think there's too many people that don't experience some level of sadness or pain at some point in the day. And if you're one of those people, God bless you. That's amazing. It's amazing. And it may also mean, I'm just saying this empathy, hold space for the possibility that maybe there's more that you can put out there and give in growth. Because when we're growing, we're encountering fear of rejection and failure. We're truly growing, and that pain is present. So our empathy for each other on that journey, then not making up stories that somebody else's life is perfect and so great, and mine isn't, and I'm not enough, and they're enough, that's all a bunch of BS. You're enough, we're enough, I'm enough, we're all enough. And we'll have pain, and we'll have self-mastery challenges. And our why is big enough. Our why is big enough to drive us forward. And when there's people in my family who I love to no end, that can't, and I, I don't judge it at all, who still feel the inability to go into my grandparents' house because they miss them so much. My why, right, I choose, is to remember what my grandparents, I believe, not I believe, but they said they wanted, they wanted us in that house. So every time I do that action, which still brings pain and remembering them and missing them, is I'm able to reassociate to the gift I'm giving them and their legacy and memory. And it fills my heart. So in this Why Wednesday, after you give yourself empathy and self-love in a time frame, time frame you deem important and optimal for your life, how can you reframe that story, that meaning, to drive yourself forward to the life that you desire, that you deserve, is your destiny, is your heart, is your legacy. And by the way, I say this, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Long before I ever heard the gift of Date with Destiny from Tony Robbins, my Uncle Jimmy said that what changed his life, and this is what he was telling me when I was a teenager, was when he read about manifest destiny, which is the phraseology in the Old West of people exploring West, manifest destiny, a pull for exploration and growth. And that manifest destiny concept is what he locked onto to intentionally build an unbelievable life by anybody's standards in every way. So when I use that word, destiny, I think of my Uncle Jimmy and his creating his own utilization and meaning of manifest destiny. So for all of you, that's our Wed Wednesday for today. It's your choice. It's your reframing of that story. 
and you have the absolute right and permission of no judgment from anybody who truly loves you to connect with your pain in any way you want, but I simply offer you the choice of deciding to give it a time to feel your feelings and then having the power to step into reframing any story because it's all just the story that you desire to create to drive yourself forward to the impact, the love, the connection, the growth, the contribution, everything, the pride, the adventure that you want to feel and experience. And I love you all. My heart's with you. Have a beautiful Y Wednesday. Thanks.